What's up, Joel? So today we're going to be learning about perpendicular lines. More specifically, we're going to be looking at proven perpendicular line relationships, identifying the theorem, definitions, property of, or possibly that justifies each statement. We're going to go ahead and actually skip this last piece um, as uh, it's not too heavily important this year, and so we're going to kind of just ignore it. Here are our standards for this year as well. If you are curious on that, let's kind of jump in. And so our theorem one that I want to talk about is that if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. And here's what I mean by that, right? So if we know that G and H are perpendicular to each other, we know that the, we're, the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two are going to be equal to 90 degrees. Because they are um, creating per perpendicular lines, that means we're going to form 90 degree angles. And so what else could you say about these angles? We know that the measure of angle one and measure of angle two are congruent to each other because they are um, creating perpendicular lines. And we know that all right angles are congruent, right? We know all right angles are going to be equal to that. And now we can look at theorem two. It states that if two sides of two adjacent acute angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. And here's what we mean by that. We know that if two sides of two adjacent acute angles are perpendicular, which is going to be one and two, then the angles are going to be complementary. And what we know by that is that angle of measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to equal 90 degrees. And then we can go into our theorem three and states that if two lines are perpendicular, then they're going to create four right angles. And that means that if we kind of extend our thinking, we know that the measure of angle one is going to be equal to the measure of angle two. We know that the measure of angle two will be equal to the measure of angle three. And the measure of angle three will be equal to measure of angle four. And we could have done this really in any order, right? We also know that measure of angle one, two, three, and four are all going to be equal to 90 degrees. And we also know that the measure of angle one and two are supplementary, which means they're going to add up to 180 degrees. And that can kind of continue, right? We know that 2 and 3 will be 180, 3 and 4 will be 180, 4 and 1 will be 180. And so let's prove our second theorem here. If we know that ray OA is perpendicular to ray OB, can we prove that the measure of AOC and the measure of COB are complementary? And so we know that they're perpendicular because it's given to us, right? And we also know that the measure of AOB is going to be equal to 90 degrees because of our definition of perpendicular lines. We also know that the measure of AOC plus the measure of COB will have to equal the measure of AOB because of our angle addition postulate, right? We know that those two measurements have to equal one or one or 90 degrees. Um, uh oh, there we go. Kind of froze there. We also know that the measure of AOC plus the measure of COB is equal to 90 degrees because of our substitution property, right? We can substitute out the measure of AOB for 90 degrees. And then we also know that the measure of AOC and the measure of COB are complementary because we know that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees, and that's our definition of complementary angles. And so let's also look at this in terms of X and see if we can make these true. If we know that the measure of AC is perpendicular to the measurement of EB, can we prove and look at these two statements here? So we know that 90 minus X will have to equal to the measure of DBE. We also know that the measure of DBC minus X will be 180 minus X, right? And so we know what if we plugged in X for 10, what would be the measure of DBE? Well, you would do um, 90 minus 10 get X or 80. And then what if X is 52, what would be the measure of DBE? Well, we just do 90 minus 52 and you would get 38. Use a diagram to find X and Y in the following program or problems. So if we know that YM is perpendicular to XZ and YL, ray YL, is perpendicular to ray YN, can we prove these questions? If angle L, Y, M is 3X and the angle of measure of M, Y, N is 4X minus 1, we know that 3x plus 4x minus 1 will have to equal 90 degrees. Okay, combine like terms, add 1 on both sides, divide by 7, and we know x is going to equal 13. Okay, can we also answer a statement like this? x, y, l is 6x. Um, a drum, I'm going to lose time, so watch the next video to finish this PowerPoint.